Hi friends, in this video, let's talk about for each loop container in SSIS. This is one of the important container in SSIS, which will help us to load multiple files data in one shot. For example, I have five files in my folder, which are all the files are located in the same folder and those are all the files are with a same structure and are of same type. So if you don't use a for each loop container, you may need to create that many packages, but nothing to worry here for each loop container is the one which will help us to load all the files in one shot and this for each loop container made our life more easier. Now, so before going to create a for each loop container package, I will show you the list of files which I am planning to load into the database. If you see this, here I have three files. Here I have three files with a rough source with the name of this. This is the first file and this is the second file. This is the third file. If you see the data, let me show you the each and every one. This is a source. This is the first one is source. This is a source one, where is source one? Yeah, this is a source one. So if you see, I created three files. Source is this, 100, 101, 102, and source one is 107, 108, 109, and source two is 104, 106, 105. So if you see this, these are the three files which are of same structure. When I say same structure, it means that, so which are delimited with the same character, and which are of same number of columns. The rows can be any. So for example, here, this is, let us say, there is no 103. Let me add 103. So rows number can be different. Yes, it can be a different. A, 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 comma. So location is something uh, UK, comma, M. See, let me save this. So if you see this, I have totally three files with different rows, with the same number of columns, and with the same delimited character. So these are all the three files which I place in the for each folder in my F drive. And if you come here again, so in the say in this folder, I have a one more file with the name of export data.xls, but I'm not going to plan that load because that is of different type. So even though those files are there in the folder, it does not touch. My for each loop container is not going to touch that particular file because I'm going to load only the txt files. Those extension I am going to specify in the for each loop container configuration. So that is the reason why I can have many number of extension files in this folder, but nothing is going to happen. My package is not going to fail. So these files data I am planning to load in the SQL server. So let me create a table dynamically. Let's wait for that. Now let's come to the uh, package. I just created it with the name of a for each dot DTSX. Let me go to the SSIS toolbox. Let's drag and drop the for each loop container. So this is a for each loop container. It looks like this actually. Means if you see the, the symbol of the for each loop container, so it, it is going to be like this. Means the same means like a, it is tied to the folder and it is going to execute multiple times. That's the reason of uh, this symbol. That's the meaning of that particular symbol. Now, so here my for each loop container is going to tie with the folder only. Now first, before going to configure for each loop container, let me create a variable first. Let me create a variable. So how to create a variable? Let's right click on the empty space of a package. Click on the variables. So this is a place you need to create a variable. You will get this window once you click that. Let's click on that add variable. If you see in the right uh, left uh, top side, you will be having one icon. Let's click on it add variable. Here you need to change the variable name by default you will get with a variable only now i'm going to make it as a file path and so scope by default it comes as a, um, a package scope that's fine and data type by default it comes with a int 32 but here that is a file path it should be a string here i need to put a default value so here be very clear here so by default you need to give any file path including file name you need to give that so that is the default uh, step you need to do it so and again like 
So I am not going to hard any file name in the for each loop configuration. But still, yes, you need to keep here one file name here. So let me put one file name here. Yeah. So any file is fine for me because all belongs to the same structure. So let's keep this. Yeah. This is the one. So but while creating it, you need to have at least one file with you. So later that file can be deleted with the same name or it does not make any difference for us. Now let's come to the for each loop container configuration. Let's double click on it. So once you double click on it, you will get a pop up. So this is a general uh, section. So you don't need to change anything. Let's come to the collection here. You need to change. So enumerator. So by default, you will get a for each enumerator, but here I need for each file enumerator because I have a files. Let's select that. So once you select that, you will get different options. Let me go back and show you what are all the options earlier. If you select this enumerator, you will get this kind of enumerated configuration. If you select the for each file enumerator, you will get a different settings. Here you need to provide your folder path. So my folder path is this. Me sell copy and paste this otherwise you can browse it that's also fine and here so by default it gives you the star dot star it means that all the files including excel notepad whatever the file is there in the folder it will try to load if you go with this but ideally so i am planning to load only txt files so that time you need to keep star dot txt so if you want to load all the files, you need to keep start that star, but it is not possibly in SSIS because the connection strings is going to vary. Now, so that is the reason why I change it to start dot txt. It means that so name can be anything. That's the reason why I'm telling earlier. So name can be anything. So now you have file names of source, source one, source two. Tomorrow you your file names are A, B, C, D, something like that. Even that time also your package is going to load the data because I'm not going to strictly keep the names here. I'm going to keep only extension. So that's the reason I kept it as star.txt. Next, traverse for subfolders. So if you have any subfolders in this folder, so it will go to the particular subfolder and it will load the data. But ideally, I don't have any subfolder. So nothing to worry. I don't need to check this option. So this is the first setting I need to do for the for each loop container. Next. Let me go to the variable mappings here. I need to map the variable first variable is file path. That's it. So this is the second setting I need to do at the for each loop container level. So once I am done with it, I need to click on OK. So let me repeat first setting I need to do in the collection tab. So here you need to select the for each file enumerator. Second, you need to provide the folder path. Next, you need to give the files. Second tab variable mappings you need to select your variable and index can be zero let's click on okay that's a for each loop container configuration now to read the data from a plat file you need to have a data flow task let's drag and drop the data flow task in the for each loop container for each loop container let's go for a data flow task configuration let's double click it here you need to do the similar activity. Let's go for a plat file source. Go for a plat file source. Now let's double click and configure this plat file source. So let's click on a new. This is very quite common for us. Yeah, so let's browse it. So you need to select at least one file. For each, yeah, let's select any file source.txt. And if you see, first are the column names in the first data row, text qualifier is none. So if you want a full details about a text qualifier, let's check my uh, video for the video collection. Go to the columns. So these are all the list of columns you have. Column delimiter is comma, row delimiter is new line. Let's click on OK. Let's click on OK. So this is the flat file source connection related. Next, go to the SS toolbox. Let's load this data into the SQL server. Let's go to the OLEDB destination. Let's link these two. Yes, let's link these two. Now let's configure the OLEDB destination. If you see that we did not create any table till now, let's create now. Let's double click on it. Okay, first let's establish a connection. 
here let's click on new so you can select the click on new so if you see my server name is dot slash sql 2012 and i will i'm planning to go with windows authentication only and my database name is sample so i am going to test my connection if there are any errors it will show here otherwise succeeded click on okay click on okay click on okay now here i need to keep the table name so here as of now i said i did not create any table so that is the reason why i am going to click on new so once i click on new it it is going to give me the syntax of a table along with the column names if there is any change in the table name you can change here so i am going to change here i am going to keep it as a for each for each and i am planning to go with the same number same uh, column names with the same uh, length and uh, data types so our intention is to load okay so let's click on okay and go to the mappings by default we are following with the same naming conventions by default um, it automatically maps nothing to worry if there is any change in the column name size in the source side or destination side then you need to map manually otherwise nothing to worry let's click on okay yeah once you are done it automatically created now let me go back to this um, go back to this uh, control flow yeah data flow task is there which is configured and last step what you need to do is let's double click on the data flow task and if you see this there is a plot file connection manager you have and one uh, oledb destination connection manager you have now you need to configure you need to change something in the plot file connection manager properties how to change let's select the plot file connection manager right click on it click on properties so once you click on properties in the right side by default you will get this window okay so go to the connection string let's click on these three dots click on these three dots so not this go to the expressions let's expand the expressions click on these three dots here you need to select the connection string property select that here in the expressions part if you are familiar with a variable name you can write it otherwise let's click on these three dots and here you need to provide the variable name my variable name is this let me drag and drop here so you can evaluate expression yeah if there is an if there are any errors you can see here itself you can identify now itself let's click on okay Let's click on OK. Now it is done. So this is the last step. You have to do it. If you see that, so we link, we created a variable. We linked that variable to the for each loop container, and again that variable is linked to this plot file connection manager. This is how my plot for each loop container is going to work. Now let me run this. So once I run this, it automatically loads data from all the three tables. If you observe very closely. you can see three blinks here okay because of three files if you have five files you will see the five blinks now let me go back to the plot file source here let me go so let me go back to the oledb destination and let me see the table let's right click click on select if you see this you will be having all the rows data 100 101 103 107 108 104 106 105 so this is how for each loop go container is going to work in the ssis so this is one of the important transformation in ssis which will help us to load multiple files data which are of same type into a single shot rather than creating that many packages in ssis that's it thank you for watching if you like our videos please like and share and please subscribe for more technology videos thank you